Long French tour. I'm great. Oh, good. I'm great. Thanks for being here today. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. We have uh, we have two things in common. Our actually. birthday. Our birthday. We were both born on uh, February 20th, and then of course. But you're uh, older. He's older. Yeah, than me. I'm a little bit older, <laughs> and then of course we're both uh, supermodels. So, uh, <laughs> but you don't have a mole. I don't, as far as you know. Ooh, anyway. Ooh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. I, no, actually, I don't think I do. We'll check later. Mm, well, during, okay. During the commercial break, we'll all check. Together. Frisk me. <laughs> Your character on Third Rock from the Sun, I, I, I think that's probably, I asked the audience earlier, they all know, they all watch Third Rock from the Sun, and your character, Harry Solomon, is the most, of all the aliens, which is actually an interesting thing, because the first time I watched Third Rock, I did not know it was about aliens. Oh. So, like, the fi first 15 minutes, I was like, what is the show about? It's so bizarre. And then I figured out, oh, they're aliens. <laughs> right, okay, right, now right. I get it. Yeah. But yours is the most childlike. Yeah I, yeah, I think he kind of is. I think he actually even leans more towards a pet uh, <laughs> than anything, you know? I mean, give him some water and some place to sit and he's good. But uh, no, it's true and it's, uh, it, it's odd because, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, Kristen, who's on the show. Yes. Uh, and you, you yeah, talked I interviewed to Kristen. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. couple of Sasquatches, she you is, too. I felt like a midget next to <laughs> I know, she's huge. She was like, they were like, one of the lines they had written for me was like, oh, you're so tall. Which she is taller than me, but it wasn't like you know I'm not a midget. Yeah, so right. I was like, right. this doesn't really work for me to say that. Oh man, it's uh, it's it's unbelievable. She's 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 huge, and she's getting uh, bigger every minute. She's just <laughs> she's destroying Tokyo even as we speak. Uh, no, she's you know I was talking to her about it, and uh, she was saying that in public people people hit her because like like they'll walk up and like slap her on the back and hey how you doing because uh, you know she's sort of this uh, big tough woman, and right. with me. It's people hug me for some reason. <laughs> now I go out in the street, and it, you know they just—I figured they, you know—they think the character's this right. nice, sort of soft thing, and so now, you know, I'm getting hugged by strangers. Right. You know, which is kind of—it's—it's it's bizarre, but uh, uh, not altogether unenjoyable. I guess it's better than hitting, though, or slugging. I, I mean, I—I I, I guess. I mean, overall, but uh, but no, it's odd. You know, you start to think, okay, you know, am I going to be hugged by strangers forever? You know. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I guess you could get in some trouble that way. Uh, no, no Speaking doubt. of getting in trouble, your character is the most susceptible to human vices, shall we say. I think that's probably true. I think that's probably true. There was a, an episode in particular, I think, where he ended up with, you know, having sex with Miss Dubchek's daughter uh, with a turkey carcass on his head, you know? And you don't, uh, you, oh, you've done it Who before. Who thought you of know that? You have. <laughs> this guy's all, like, judging me. Oh, yeah, I would never have sex with somebody with a turkey carcass on my head. Liar! <laughs> Little liar! No, you know, so he just ends it, up in these was situations. Was it a cooked turkey or, like, a nut? It was a cooked turkey. And the funny thing about my job is that you sit, you end up sitting there, and they've got three turkeys to choose from, you know? And you're, you're clipping them with sheer saying well I want it to fit so that the turkey arms come out and look like a Viking helmet you know <laughs> it, it, it's your job you know you, you have to sort of do it so you end up with shears making it bigger uh, cutting out ears you right. know and you have to do three of them so uh, you know you sing there with the you know, greasy turkey carcass and the turkey on your wrangler, head, sure. but you're getting paid good money to do it it's so uh, <laughs> you know you, you can't complain when I first read that they said that um, Harry had sex with the turkey Carcass. I didn't get to the, the rest of the sentence. Right, I was right. like, sex with the turkey carcass no, on that, prime time? That, no, that was on my own time. But uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing it up anyway. <laughs> Your character, I would also, is known for his squint. Yeah, the squint. The squint. Yeah, yeah. But, um, is there like a, how did you develop that? I mean, was that written into the character? No, you know, it's sort of my own uh, genetic affliction that I've just uh, decided to make a dollar on, more or less. It's, uh, I'm a little squinty myself, and I just sort of play it up, uh, you know, when I'm on the show. But it's sort right. of uh, become this odd trademark. Is and, there a special uh, technique that you do? It's actually, it's just sort of... I think it just gives him a dull, uh, uncomprehending look that makes everything, every realization, just sort of slightly out of grasp, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you And what know. about the voice? You, that's also... Did you do that in your audition for that? I did that in my audition, which is... I'm, I'm still surprised they gave me the damn job, to tell you the truth, you know? Because <laughs> I came in, you know, with this character, and I'm thinking, oh, this is lame. You know, nobody's ever going to bite on this, you know? But, uh... 
uh, it actually just kind of uh, it, it kind of panned out. I think they could uh, they they could see sort of where I was going with it. And uh, uh, for once in my life, I ran into uh, some people uh, who were in power who were just uh, damn weirder than I was. You know, so it just uh, you know it, it just it was a great moment of luck for me. But with that voice, is it something um, like? You didn't know necessarily they were buying the voice too, and now you're ending up doing it for, you know, three years or whatever. Yeah. I mean, good do you? Is it an uncomfortable voice to do, or I mean, do you like doing the voice? No, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it now. It's funny, you know. Sometimes you think, okay, you know, there was a time where I was like a serious actor in the theater or something, and now uh, basically, uh, you know, I'm, well, I'm potsy <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's like you know. Alien potsy. Yeah, exactly. Now it's, uh, you know, it's it's going to be that, and it's. Uh, there are times where you think I'm never going to have a serious part in my life again, or else this is uh, this is going to be pretty much it. But uh, man, you know, there are just worse fates, and I work with great people, and I have a great time, and it's a terrific show, and uh, I could be lifting really heavy stuff for a living, Cindy. You know, I mean, every day I wake up and I think, oh my gosh, I've got this great job, you know, and I don't have to lift heavy stuff, and I don't have to, you know, smell like a bar mat or, uh, or you know. Uh, Whatever. So, so you it's, think you'll uh, stick with the show for a little while? I am. I am going to uh, ride this thing right into the ground. They're going to have to pry me out. <laughs> yeah. That's a great position to be in. That's nice. We'll have more with French Stewart when we return. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back to later on Cindy Crawford, and we're hanging with Harry from Third Rock from the Sun. I had seen you before, actually, Third Rock, on news radio and Seinfeld. Right, right. You had, like, a whole NBC thing going on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's, uh, you know, you get on a show and they start asking you to do other shows. And I was, uh, I was really excited to do news radio because it was, uh, it's one of the shows I like. And uh, Phil Hartman is, uh, you know, one of my personal uh, heroes. I think he's, uh, he's really terrific. So it was, uh, it's, it's nice. It's, uh, you know, it's nice to have uh, more opportunities than I've right. uh, ever had. And what about your first television role? Oh, you know, I was I was on the uh, new WKRP in Cincinnati, which is like my first job, you know, because I had been an actor forever up to then. But it was uh, it was all uh, theater, you know, and it which is uh, which I love, but it doesn't exactly uh, give you any money, you know. And there comes a point <laughs> where uh, you know if you want uh, you if you want chicks, <laughs> better at least have a little bank in your pocket, something, you know. I mean, it's just uh, I just had certain materialistic needs, and so. Uh, so I was trying to get a job and trying to get a job, and I just couldn't. And for a long time, I was just like a guy who just did not get jobs. And then I got one job, and I don't know if it was like a psychological thing or what, but it was like I just became a guy who got jobs, you know? Awesome. Retarded jobs, but, uh, <laughs> but still jobs. Jobs nonetheless. Yeah, fine, you know? But then you're on a hit show, yeah. and um, I don't know how long it took you to figure out, okay, this is going to be successful. I mean, did you know right away, or did it take you... You know, no, you know, for the first year and a half, I was taking home food from craft services and sort of <laughs> stowing it away like a hamster. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you, you're never quite really uh, convinced that everything is going to work out or that right. it's going to take off. I knew I liked it, and I knew uh, I knew we felt good about it, but uh, that does not always make a hit or uh, even make something that's going to stay on the air for very long. Well, was there a moment when you said, "Okay, I think this is going to go for a little while. I'm going to do treat myself to something." Yeah, well, you know what? It's uh, the thing is, is that, yeah. I mean, that reached a point where I thought, okay, yeah. Now I'm now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna take my girlfriend to Hawaii, you know, or I'm going to do. So I think it was uh, it was somewhere along the second year. We had already had a couple of magazine covers. I still really was You're ready for them to, to yank um, it. <laughs> yeah, right. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you and I are in direct competition, Cindy. <laughs> because I'm hot, baby. I'm hot. <laughs> you described the, your career route as the scenic route. Yeah. What did you mean by that exactly? You know what? I think I'm a, I'm a remedial student of life. I think, uh, <laughs> I think I pretty much take the scenic route everywhere. I'm a little dense, and it takes me a long time to get where I'm going. Uh, if I, uh, if I want to end up on TV, I have to, uh, you know, do uh, puppet shows for children for, uh, you know, 30 zillion years and then end up going, you know, on to another thing and doing stage and doing this and doing that. But I, I never really uh, figure out that uh, direct route. I always end up, I mean, I have a lovely time and I end up right. seeing a lot of things that I might not normally see. But, uh, but it, just, uh, it just takes time and that's, that's me. You mentioned that 
puppet shows, and people probably don't know, yeah. one, everyone's had like crappy jobs yeah, on their way yeah. to getting where they were. I mean, I dusted shirts. Did um, you really? Yeah, that was like the worst, I would say, for, or picking corn in like really hot cornfields. But you... Oh, man. I know, it's bizarre. I'm from Illinois, so everyone picks corn there. But you actually did puppet shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, to teach about the evils they were like, of drug uh, use. Yeah, they were like uh, health and safety themed puppet shows, <laughs> you know, and you would go around uh, uh, all over. You would travel all over the country. Really, they had them all over the place, but you would travel all over the place and do a different school every day and they were like health and safety shows you know so it's like don't drink don't smoke don't do and I'm do sure any you live this. by all those rules oh sure right? well you know, that's the thing is that you'd end up like we'd go down to San Diego and during the day it'd be like you know don't drink brush your teeth you know uh, don't <laughs> smoke and then uh, we'd go down to Tijuana at night and all the actors would be like you know, ah, yeah. you know just out of their heads guns and having a great you know, oh guns <laughs> firearms uh, you know no midgets yeah yeah got the whole thing going um you've been described I think by some writer that the roles you play are like freaks, losers, and perverts. Yeah, right, That must right. make you feel so good. Oh, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> it's golden now. Well, it's funny. It was like I was talking about this the other day. There's a, there's a, a point where I, I had to shave my head for a role, and I started getting work, you know. Not like, you know, cool guy Sean Connery work, like uh, borderline mentally ill work, you know. <laughs> but, it, but it was sort of my end, you know. It was, uh, I, it was my calling card, and it, it got me into a... Uh, uh, to doing everything and, and that I'm doing now and getting me uh, what I've got and it was it just worked out well. Are you ever afraid of being typecast that you know that 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 was how people will see you and you won't be able to get out of that role? Yeah, you know, I think to a degree it's already happened. I mean, wh it's like how far you can go uh, broadens, but what they'll let you do narrows. So, um, you know, I'm uh, I'm. Uh, Riding the idiot train for a while. That's just that's just the way it is. But, but making I'm, money doing it. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'll uh, I'll. Uh I'll, I'll tumble for you. But you Sandy. did Shakespeare. I mean, yeah. he, he's like done serious drama. No, I've done, you know, I did, I did Shakespeare. I did, uh, I was a member of the cast theater here that did a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, actually cutting edge theater and uh, a lot of great stuff. I've done national tours. I've, uh, you know, I've had this nice expansive career. So it's funny that, uh, you know, you get known for playing one thing and then that's, that's pretty much it. But then, you know, if you try and get out of it, people just laugh at you because they're like, oh, you're potsy. You're not going to do anything serious. Just leave it alone, you know, let it go and so I'm, I'm gonna let it go and if I get lucky I'll get right. lucky and if not I've got a lovely life. But as so many people also their careers evolve like 10 years later they get to do something totally different so I oh, mean sure. I, I don't I don't think you have well I'm waiting for that. one of my friends to get in power so <laughs> you know so they'll they'll throw their old buddy a job but uh, and you collect silent films like you're yeah, a big yeah. fan oh yeah I you know I uh, I, I, I love them I, I think they're really elegant and there's something about them that just uh, uh, touches me in a way that nothing else does uh, you know unless you want to give it a shot <laughs> Hola! I got a million of them Cindy <laughs> we'll be right back with French Stewart one later there with French Stewart. So French is a little bit of an unusual name. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a family name, and it's uh, it's a name that's been passed down from uh, from son to son. And uh, so I'm I'm like the fourth one. And would you be would you if you had a son, would it be the fifth one? You know, I don't know. You take a lot of grief as a child when your name is French because it's you know it's oh French fry, French kiss, French uh, flip flip flip, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, French 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 French, yo 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 yo, you know. And, and after a while, you know, I mean, you're you're always a good sport about it, but then it's like. <gasps> You but know, also, you're, just, you're like so original, right? Because they, I got called Crawdaddy, Crawfish, craw, you know, craw, right, craw, right. whatever. So yeah. it, and no you, one comes up with anything new after a while. Oh no, no, no! And after about the zillionth time that you introduce <laughs> yourself to somebody and you say I'm French and they say, oh, I'm Spanish, you know, <laughs> after a while, it's like it's you just it's sort of like you just it's just sort of muscle memory. You just go. <laughs> <laughs> what were you well. like as a kid? You know, it's kind of strange. It's like there is a, there, there were there are people who knew me as a child, and they met me. It depended on the day that you met me. I mean, I could be either be really shy, and if you met me on a shy day, then I was shy to you forever. I would remember, you know, I just like some people I would seize up with, and then. Uh, there were other kids I was really gregarious with, and uh, I would just, you know, be more out and sort of happy. And if I met you that way, then I would be that way forever. So, uh, you know, Depends. I was, yeah, depend on what day you met me. I, I would either be uh, sort of a, a, a morose uh, loser or uh, <laughs> this gregarious, uh, happy kid. So, uh, you know. So here you are, an adult. Do you still have days like the, oh, like the morose days? And absolutely. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is that uh, uh, meeting people, it's like, uh, 
there was this day that I, 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 I took my girlfriend to uh, 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee, right? Because I'm a great date. I'm <laughs> And, uh, and uh, you know, somebody saw me, and the next day it was on the Internet. And so I thought, oh, no, you know, I'm going to have to be nice forever. You know, I'm never going to be able to have a bad day or to be, a, you know, a creep, because then, you know, it's gonna, whoever happens to be there are going to be like, oh, yeah, I saw that guy on Third Rock, the guy who's supposed to be Mr. Fuzzy Happy Guy, and he's a real jerk, you know. And so you, can be, you don't have to always be nice. The problem is you have to read about it when you're not. No kidding. <laughs> I bet. We'll be back with more French Stewart here on Lake. <laughs> read that you were a Trekkie. You know what? I'm not like a Trekkie, like a Dungeons and Dragons kind of sit with your friends and like talk about all the episodes Trekkie. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I like the classic old Trek, you know, where you see like Captain Kirk, like, you know, make it out with aliens and <laughs> smacking people around. Hot you know? babe aliens. Yeah. If you did a movie, which character would you want to play? If you did a Star Trek movie. Oh, uh, Uhura. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, want, I want that thing in my ear. That's all I'm interested in. And what's, what do you have coming up that we should... Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, Third Rock, as usual, on Wednesday nights at uh, 9 o'clock. And uh, also, I'm uh, doing a children's uh, a weekly animated thing, Hercules, which is going to be uh, great. And uh, also, uh, we are going to have uh, the, uh, the Super Bowl, Third Rock, hour-long, it's like uh, our hour longs are big, they're huge, you'll love it, and Cindy Crawford's gonna be on it because she told me she would and she would never <laughs> lie to me. Thank you so much for being oh, it's here. It's my pleasure. That's it for our show tonight. I'm Cindy Crawford, and I'll catch you later.